Okay, today we're going to do a quick lesson on um, milling a log. All the materials I saw so far showed that they, you could mill a log just by turning on the saw and pushing it through, but what I found is it took me 30 to 50 logs to actually mill one efficiently so I didn't have any waste. So I want to take, take you through that process. The second part is actually laying out your workspace. So in this case we got our pile of logs, our sawmill, and then various stacks for storing our product as we go through the process. So I'm just going to walk you through that very quickly. So the logs move from the, the log stack to the sawmill. And the first thing that happens when you make your first cut is you create a, I'll call it a bark slab, that goes off the end of the sawmill to a set of skids. So what I found is that if you gather these and bundle them, then you can store them to the side and they stay well behaved. Then what happens is the actual lumber I found goes on a set of skids to the side here, uh, depending on whether you're cutting two by fours, whatever, one or two piles, depending. And then you have uh, spare lumber that tends to come off the other end. Like in this case, we've got three different piles. We have one by twos, two by fours, and two by twos, because I'm cutting two by lumber. So these are all kind of laid out so that they come off the end of the sawmill after you've made a cut. There are two additional piles, which I call the, re call the recut piles. Uh, in this case, we're cutting two by and one by recuts. So whenever you get a odd size one or one a board that's got a uh, that can be recut into a usable board, but it's not, it needs to be specially processed. What I do is I gather them together into a stack, and I'll, like for example, these two by twelves, I'll uh, go two by sixes. I was able to harvest before, I'll go ahead and put them on as a group and sliver them down together. Same thing, I've got a one by pile over here. So I'm going to go on and yeah, the first step is make sure you got your uh, stops up or your rails because when you set the log on it'll roll off the other side if you're not careful. Okay so I picked a log intentionally that wasn't just real pretty. Uh, it's got bark and not bark etc and it's tapered and it's got some uh, stops on it. Now usually when you're cutting, if you know what you're doing, you'll cut those off, but I got this someplace else. So when you start out, you want to take about three measurements. Now all logs are tapered. they got a fat end and a small end. And the way I kind of came to is that what we want to do is chalk the small end up to the same height as the big end. Now then the other height that matters is a lot of times a log will have a saddle or a dish, and the, the final depth of that dish determines how deep you want to cut. So in this case, we're looking at 11 and a half. It's got a dip. That's 11 and a half. And then over here, uh oh, 11 and a half. Well, so we got lucky on this one. So what will happen is we'll just dog it in 11 and a half. Now, the, so I'm going to use my cut depth so that when I make my first cut, I'm going to get at least or about six inch wide strip. And I usually find that somewhere between an inch and an inch and a half depending on how round the log is, the eccentricity of the log. So in this case, it looks like I want to cut about an inch and a quarter. You get that number just by kind of staring at it and saying, well, if I cut this side off, what amount? So I will probably cut this one at about 10 inches, 10 to 10 and a quarter inches. Okay, so the thing you got to watch out for with the bandsaw, and if you got these uh, sticks, is that if you run the saw into the, the, the stop here, you'll end up dulling, dulling your saw blade really fast. So now on the first cut, I usually try to set the stop at a, so it's going to butt against about the fat middle of the log. All right, so given that this is an example, I've got about a half inch thick, three eighths inch thick stab, and this one is a little bit low. So what I usually do is I take my can hook and I'll pry up the log. So that it's going to. All right, I made a correction. This is uh, about a half inch wide, but I got a long one so that I can lay it across the entire bar on the sawmill. All right, what that does, it means when we turn the log over the next time, the stick is likely to be there, so I won't have to chalk it for the next cut. Okay, so when you set your log, the main thing is the blade spins and it's going to try to pull the log. So if you take your log and you shake it and it's secure, you're good for the cut. But if the log's going to rock, and you can't get a good cut, so you know, use the dogs and whatever it takes to get it stuck. And the other, another thing is when you're making your cut, the higher on the log, the more secure it has to be. When you get to start cutting down lower, 
there's a less tendency for the log to rotate as it's getting pulled by the blade. The beta first cut, when you look at it, you pick it up to the side, you'll see it's not very much of a piece of wood. And if you look at it from the side, you'll see that there's not a board inside that. So what I do is I make the first cut, and to get it out of the way, I just pick it up, a nice six inch side swath over here, so it's decent. So what we're going to do is go ahead and cut it off loose here. Let it set. It's naturally going to row this my way most ways. Set the deals. Take it. We can't hook. Pivot it up. Like that. Alright, next thing that's important is while it's up here, we want it flush because we cut this degree at 90, 90 degrees, so if this isn't flush, then when we make our top cut, it won't be flat or it won't be at right angles. So, and that remember, I, I put a long board on here. When I rotated this over, this board that we, our, our chalk, just slid to the other side, but it's still underneath. So if the taper is the same, then this end is going to be at about the same size height as that one, and we won't have to chalk it again. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of my setup. Uh, we'll make another cut in a minute. And the other thing is, in order to get it flush, you have to have these high enough that you can push the log against it. So what I do is I set my dogs, and then I back my dogs off to make sure the log's in the right place. And then I'll rotate these down just by tapping them to about halfway b below the board. But the main thing to look out for is when you make your cut, you don't hit these with the blade, because like I said before, and I've done twice now, that makes your blade dull very quickly. If the, if the log's right, then I should be at about 12 inches at both ends. So I'm at 12 inches at this end, so my taper was consistent. And a little over 12 inches at this end, but that's just the way it goes. So I'm going to go ahead and make the same cut, and then I'll get about the same. And if I'm lucky, I'll get a square corner or almost a square corner here. Because if I've got a square corner on this edge, that makes it easier because then I've got, I'm working with a square stock. <coughs> and I won't have to recut. Uh, the, the, the next piece of the board that sits between my slab and my square stock. Okay, we made our second cut. Once again, it's getting a little thick at this end, but when I look at this slab, you can see that it's thin enough on this end that there's no such thing, there's no board inside. So once again, this was a pretty efficient cut. Um, if the whole thing would have been this thick, then I said, well, we, we cut it too deep. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, take this piece of slab, put it on the All right, now we've made our two two cuts. So at this point, we need to move our remove our shim cuz if we cut now, this side would be one half inch smaller than the other. The shim's got to come out, set aside. And you look, make sure there's no bark or anything holding up high because that will cause your cut to be off too. So at this point we got two square sides laying flat on the bed and this sawmill has chocks here so now I can drop these guys, push them against the chocks and that'll hold it fast. So next step, we get ready to start cutting our third side and this is where this milling technique is going to differ from what you might think. Because most people think you cut all four sides off. Reality is now we've got what is at least a six by six. But I'm going to go ahead and leave this fourth side round because that's going to let me cut it into two inch sticks. And then when I turn it sideways, I can decide it. You look how, how much wood I got to work with. Now this sawmill has a three way scale. I've got the actual depth of the board on the left. And then it's graduated in two inch thick sections inch and a half and these are quarters so eight eight would be two inches six is an inch and a half five is an inch and a quarter and four is one inch thick so once I get dialed into a thick board thickness I can just drop the uh, blade a fixed amount and that lets me cut specific thicknesses because these graduations or these marks uh, compensate for the width of the saw blade so from this point forward now that I'm cutting dimensional lumber I will try to get since I'm going for two inch thick in this particular round I'll try to work on these eight numbers which allow me to cut two inch thick slabs okay now we're looking at the end of the log and what I'm trying to do is figure out the best place to start my cut so it would be really nice if it lines up on an eight which in this case 
I have to go all the way down this deep to get to my first two inch board, which means that this is effectively two six by sixes. But when I look at this, I can pull it up this high, and that's another eight. So if I work this log, I can actually get what looks to be almost four six by two by sixes out of the log just by doing doing this top top cut to cut a slab off and then doing recuts below. Now when we look down the log, you can see here in this corner that I'm going to have a little bit of rounded edge, which is okay. We can clear the clean that up later, and then in the next view, I'll look straight down the log, and you'll see that the blade's going to travel down, and that this is actually going to be the thinnest part. Notice I made all four of those cuts without touching the log. So now we're cut by two by two by stock. It's not two by six. It's two by log width. But um, this part here, once again, I might get a one by six from here on. But the reality is I still haven't wasted any lumber. Okay, at this point I released my dogs as I was cutting because once I got low in the log, the blade was pulling across and the, all the weight of the wood on top would hold the log steady. So right now I'm just going to pull it back. It stops. Now with the stops up, that means I can take the cat hook and just flip the whole mess at once. Alright, now since I'm go I've got a square corner on the bottom, I don't need the stops, so I'll put them back down, but they just make it easy for me to spin it. So make sure that this snug against the opposite side. Reset the hooks. Now I kind of want to have it towards the bottom, but the other thing about this particular cut is because we're high on the log and there's a fair amount of moment pull it across. I want the log to be secure. So once I'm done setting it, I want to test it by pushing on the top to make sure the force of the blade going across through the cut is going to turn the log or try to spin the log. Otherwise, I'll end up with a crooked top. Okay, so right now we're looking at the end of the log, and we can kind of see that's six inches. So all of this above here is available for, in this case, probably two bys, because you know I might get a two before all the way down there, but more than likely it's just two by two. But the total waste is, say for instance, I take a two by two, it'll go across here, and I'll only have the equivalent of a slab. But if this was a bigger log, I could get a two before out of the top, or if it was a really big log, I'd get a two by six. But what this particular three side cut technique allows me to do is leverage the fat of the log and get more lumber out of this log than I would if I tried to square cut it before um, first as opposed to leaving this uh, this this round side up all right at this point off the top come just a couple of little bitty slabs so you can see right there there's not much waste so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these This is what happens when you don't secure your logs and, and they tilt and jam your saw.